The next um, topic we wanted to address is that we always take an opportunity to discuss uh, with an ESPID member. And we decided to talk with somebody who has been around a long time, has looked at, has attended ESPID many, many times. And you know, when you talk about Olympic records, you usually say how many times they organized this. And I think he's the only one who organized it twice. Maybe not. And this is Ulrich Heininger. <laughs> so we wanted to take a little opportunity to ask you a few questions. And um, so after 15 years, you, you chaired again the, the, I'm not sure what, you, somebody is showing me something, but um, you chaired again this session. Yes. And you, how was it different? Because you had two wonderful chairs this time. <laughs> <laughs> I had a wonderful chair last time <laughs> also, but you are, of course, amazing, both of you. It was fantastic. How, how it was different, you wanted to know? Yeah, well, I think it was both different and se several things also were very similar. So in terms of um, getting things organized, you need a local organizing committee, This was very similar to 15 years ago. And you need to shape the program. And this is by brainstorming and identifying interesting topics and interesting people. So this reminded me very much of what we did 15 years ago. But what was really different was, um, well, there was no food tasting. <laughs> 15 years ago, we had the opportunity to taste what was offered during the coffee breaks and for the... Um, a faculty dinner, and this was really an interesting experience, but this is a side issue. And otherwise, I mean, um, going through the abstract, selecting those which fit best was very similar to 15 years ago. But what really, uh, I think, was even more work than it used to be is um, organizing the symposia, and uh, being a moderator means not only that you step up to the stage and you introduce the next speaker and take questions, but you had to train The, the technical aspects, uh, how to identify questions, how to pass them on to the speakers. And if you were one of the speakers at this meeting and it was not live, you had a recording and for the recording you had a rehearsal. So it's quite an, quite an effort, but in the end I could say it's fun again. So Uli, this time you had a more senior role, so did that change uh, anything to you or was it equally equally much work or less work than last time? Um, I wish I could say it was less work and I had hoped it would be a little bit less work, but in fact it wasn't. But as always, you, you must have the same experience. You start and you think, oh, so much work, and then it gets easier and easier and more and more fun. And, and now this is the, the peak, the, the last day, and uh, yeah, and hopefully we can relax and say, It was worthwhile, the effort. At yeah, least I can... You can already say that, no? It was really worth the effort. But, um, Uli, you, in uh, 2006, when you organized it last, it, the attendance was about 1,700 people, and now it almost doubled all this time later. Is it very different to organize a larger conference? I don't think so. I mean, you need rooms for the different parallel symposia, and you need either physical rooms or you need virtual rooms. And, and Kenneth did a fantastic job in offering all these virtual rooms where the parallel sessions and symposia could be held. And, and this went very fluently. And in fact, well, when you speak, you don't know how many people there are out there listening to the symposium. So that's really somehow different. And um, yeah. But in the end, whether you, whether you do the work for... A hundred, a thousand, or ten thousand people doesn't make so much difference. So, Uli, when you look back at the last 15 years when you had your last conference, um, in terms of your main topic, pertussis, so what has changed between 20, 2006 to today when we talk about pertussis? Is there, has there anything changed? Oh, now you're offering me the stage. Yeah, <laughs> yeah a lot has changed over the last 15 years with regards to my favorite topic. And probably what impressed me most was that we finally were able to convince more and more countries to introduce preschool booster doses and also um, adolescent doses, 
with acellar or pertussis vaccines. And probably what I find the most impressive step forward was introducing um, immunization in pregnancy in more and more countries because this really is the, um, the major step forward to prevent serious pertussis in young infants. So that's what really um, changed a lot over these 15 years. Do you think that COVID had an influence on research in this topic? Um, well, actually, pertussis has been, very, has been endemic everywhere. If you look for it, you find it. But amazingly, with the lockdown, or maybe not so amazingly, with the lockdown due to the pandemic, um, case numbers have decreased. It has almost disappeared for the time being. But I'm realistically thinking it'll come back at some point. And in terms of, if you refer to the vaccines, um, I think with the messenger RNA vaccines and the vector-based vaccines, we are entering a new era of, um, of vaccines. And these vaccines have been around for decades already, but now they had the chance to prove and show that they really work and they work at a, at a really large uh, scale. So now that more than a billion people worldwide have already been successfully immunized against COVID-19. So mRNA vaccine? Well, we need the magic key first, and this would be to identify the ideal composition, which antigen or which antigens would need to go, and the information of which antigens should be translated into messenger RNA. And actually, we are still struggling with um, identifying biomarkers which reliably predict protection. And as long as we don't know them, we are not in an optimal position to design the next generation of vaccines. So first we need to do the homework. But in general, I think it's a fantastic period, a new era of vaccination. And as soon as we are over this um, pandemic, I hope that more efforts will go into other vaccines again. One topic that really came out, according to me, which maybe the pediatricians were more used to, but was discussing vaccine hesitancy. And this is something that really became a hot topic this year, in this last, at least last six months. And I think we're all growing from this discussion as well, don't you think? Yeah. Well, WHO has already identified um, vaccine hesitancy as one of the major threats to global um, health before the pandemic started. And um, yeah, that's, that's still true. And we, I think we need continuously fight against that and convince with arguments, but also with sympathy. And we heard lots of interesting inputs, even uh, amid the expert session on, on that topic. Yeah.